Hi everyone, Evan Alexander here with another Cinema 4D tutorial. Today, I want to talk about shadow catchers. This has come up a little bit in some of the comments on other videos. And so today, let's talk about how we make seamless backgrounds or how we can put some 3D objects inside of a 2D photo. Pretty cool, right? This is nice and smooth here. Uh, no matter where I put my camera, I'm going to get this perfect kind of you know, invisible, seamless studio kind of uh, look, which is really nice. Here's another one. Let's fire up the renderer here. Um, it's great for product shots or just kind of isolating models really easily and quickly. So here's a chair. Um, so let's look at how to set this up. It's, it's really easy. We're using Corona today in uh, R25, but the principle should be the same no matter what we do. Let's get rid of all the stuff that makes it work here. And uh, we'll start from scratch. So we have our chair here just floating in the void. Uh, lighting's already in place there, that's good. Um, so what do we need to do? So the first thing is we need to add some kind of geometry for the shadows to land on. So I'm gonna use a disc today. Uh, you could use a plane, that's okay. Um, and we want to make this uh, pretty big. We want to make it large enough that the shadows of this uh, have plenty of geometry to kind of fall onto. So uh, I'll show you later. If you make it too small, you get some problems. But there you go. We'll just make this nice and big. So that's the first thing we need. And then now we need to add a sky. So I'm going to say create environment sky. It's important, I think, to say that this is a native Cinema 4D sky, not a Corona sky. Um, so make sure you're grabbing the right thing here. So we're going to add this in. And so this has basically created a, an atmosphere, an environment uh, kind of around us. Now, if, if I were to render now, you'd see it doesn't look great. We're going to have uh, this kind of plain looking disc on the floor and then like a white background. So we're not seamless yet, right? Uh, but this is kind of what we've added in here. So, all right, we're, we're on our way. We're getting started. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Corona uh, materials here. I'm just going to add a physical material, just a standard Corona material here. We'll call this one Sky, just to be good housekeeping. And uh, why don't we uh, say here, we'll just go like gray here, right? All right, we'll do like a 30% gray on this. I'll keep the roughness up pretty high, so it's good. So now I'm gonna apply this to the sky. And so now we've added the color to our sky. So now we need the shadow catcher. So that is actually driven by materials, believe it or not. So I'm going to come back to the Corona material menu here, and I'm going to say shadow catcher material. Whoa, which is this weird black material. Now this, we're going to apply to the plane, right? Because, uh, I'm sorry, to the disc. I'm lying. It's a disc. Uh, because this is the geometry that we want to catch shadows. Hey, look at that. So that's applied now, but we're still, we're close, but we're not quite there. I'm going to go click on the shadow catcher material to bring up its attributes. And here in the shadow tab, you can see we have a drop down for mode. There's backplate and environment. And in this case, we want environment. So I'm going to pick that. And so now this opens up a slot that's looking for an environment, which we have in our sky. Yeah. So basically what's happening is the material is tinting the sky. And then the shadow catcher material is saying, hey, whatever the sky does, I want you to do the same thing. And so now that we've set this system up, if we run the instant renderer, you'll see that we should have this 30% gray, nice, seamless background. And lo and behold, we do. There it is. So if I want to change this now, it's just a matter of working with this sky material. So 
if we bring this back up, so instead of gray here, what if, what if we do like kind of a yellowy orange? Now you'll notice that it kind of broke. And this really is just a problem with Corona's instant renderer where it somehow it can't just uh, process that change without a refresh. So I'm gonna stop the instant renderer and then I'm just gonna start the instant renderer back up. And you'll see, annoying, but not a deal breaker here. You'll see that now, dun, 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 now we're back to what we had before. So that's great. And uh, you know, so wherever you move the camera around, it's gonna be this perfect kind of seamless background. Uh, there's a little bit more we can do. I'm gonna go back and click on the shadow catcher here. Now we've been working in the shadow tab, working in the shadows. But if I come over to the basic tab, there are tick boxes here for reflection and or bump. So for example, if we turn on the reflection, it's gonna, you'll see a reflection tab gets added here. It's already starting a little bit. It defaults to like a 50% glossiness. So if I were to really up this, you'll see here that we can now get this kind of glossy floor. It's still seamlessly kind of blending in really nicely. Um, and, you know, so you can just kind of dial this in uh, by hand, you know, how much kind of reflection do you want? You can even load a texture map in here, you know, like a black and white grunge map or something if you want to kind of break this up a little bit. And then bump, I won't really demo it, but bump does exactly what you would think. Same thing. It just means that now you can add a bump material to this, uh, some, you know, some kind of uh, concrete kind of grunge, something just to break this up a little bit more, right? Make it look like fabric or textured, uh, you know, whatever you want. So there you go. Pretty cool, right? So I love this. I use this all the time for product shots and um, for just, you know, kind of hero shots of specific models that I want to show off. Now we can do something else here. Here's this Ford Raptor model. So I can, uh, the only thing in the scene here is uh, same thing. There's a background object. Uh, there is a Corona sky that's, uh, you know, our HDR that's lighting the scene. And then I'm using a plane this time for the, for the ground instead of a disc, kind of a shadow catcher. And uh, so if we fire this up here for a sec, take a second. You can see that so now what's happening is we're using a JPEG to kind of define our environment. And we're taking this 3D model of the truck and making it look as if it's in the scene. So this is pretty sweet. So how does this work? It's, it's kind of the same principle, but it just works slightly differently. So uh, I've added a background object instead of a sky. It's the same thing. I'm gonna to come to create environment and I'm gonna choose background. These are native, this is a native cinema uh, uh, object, the background object. And what that does is it just basically is gonna fill the whole frame with whatever material we apply to it. So I've made here physical one, just a basic Corona material. And in the base layer, I added the back plate. Right, so this is a backplate that I have, I bought online, and it came with a few different backplates and then an HDRI that was captured in this same location uh, here. So these like train tracks, I think this is in Norway somewhere, Denmark. Um, so it's a, you know, it's a package deal here so that the lighting and the background all kind of match. You get logical reflections and the lighting makes sense. So the backplate has been added uh, as a material, not, not even a luminous material, just a straight up diffuse channel base layer texture here. And then this material gets applied to the background object here, right? And I've set its projection mode to frontal and uh, it, we should be good to go. So the only other thing I did was that I made sure 
that my aspect ratio here of my rendering matches the aspect ratio of the backplate. Otherwise, you're going to shrink or stretch the image and, you know, you may get some weird distortion. So you do have to work within the proportions of the backplate. So fix that in Photoshop if you want to change it up before you get into cinema, okay? Uh, so where were we? Physical material, JPEG applied to background. Now, on the plane that is the ground here, we added a Corona shadow catcher material. And so let's go back here. Now, this time, instead of environment in the mode, we chose backplate because we're using a backplate here in this one. And then I just loaded in that exact same backplate JPEG that I'm using here in physical. I loaded this into the shadow catcher material. So now what happens is it's using the backplate for the whole image. And then the shadow catcher is saying, hey, whatever image you're using on the sky, I want you to seamlessly match this into the ground. And again, just make sure your ground plane is uh, large enough to kind of receive the shadows that you get from the object here, from the truck. So this is super cool, and, uh, and it seems to work really, really well. Uh, and if I, spin, if I spin the HDRI here, you can see that I can move the reflections and I can move the shadows around a little bit. Um, so, you know, obviously make sure that your HDR and your backplate, line, you know, if the sun is right here, you want to make sure that your HDR is doing the same thing so that the shadows are kind of logical. So this seems great. I love this. But here's the, here's the only catch with this, with the kind of 3D models. The, the whole scene here, the truck sitting here, this is all just kind of lined up by eye. Right, so if I were to, I'm gonna just kill this protection tag on the camera here. If I start to move my camera around, right? I'm not moving the truck, I'm not moving the ground plane, I'm literally just moving my camera. And so I can kind of set this up here, but it's really, I'm doing this by eye, right? And if I pull back to try to make the truck appear smaller, What's actually happening is my camera's getting farther away and then the truck is not kind of sitting like where I want it. Now, I could, I guess, move the truck kind of, you know, forward here, but uh, it's, so it's not a perfect system, right? You have to kind of really make sure that you are lining up the perspective and making sure that everything is, you know, kind of sitting nice and where you want it, you know. You could actually scale the truck here. So if I did shrink the truck down or, you know, expand the truck, I can make it, you know, kind of larger to kind of fit the scene. Um, you know, but when you start playing with scale, then you're opening up a can of worms when you start getting into, you know, kind of light calculations and camera lensing and depth of field and, you know, stuff like that. So, so be careful. If anybody knows of a way to kind of do this better, please comment and let me know. I, I know that there is a camera calibrator that uh, is part of native cinema. Uh, and I've tried that with kind of mixed results. Uh, you know, Google it or look at it in YouTube if you want to know more about that. Um, so that kind of works okay. But, um, you know, when you're trying to like, you know, maybe put furniture into a location photo, uh, it becomes much harder to kind of do that and, you know, kind of like really like work to scale. So uh, let me know if you know anything about that because uh, I would like to learn more about doing that. So, so there you go. Seamless backgrounds in Corona with the Shadow Catcher. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon.